about one of the pilots that we have put up. Um, it is really a, a pilot. We are trying to find ways of teaching our future um, science lecturers. And we were looking for a tool that we thought could help us uh, assist them. This is a very, uh, we call them teaching assistants because they are not quite tutors. They are higher than the uh, level just slightly above tutors. Most of them are postgraduate <coughs> students, so they have masters, um, um, masters working towards their PhD or could be owners working towards their masters. And in science, you know that we struggle to keep our staff. So we are trying to get our way of infusing the, the teaching and learning into their work. But it, it was a bit problematic because first of all, they have workloads as teaching assistants, and then they also have to look at their postgraduate studies. So the question was, how could we pilot a program where we're teaching them the essential things about teaching in a higher education environment without overwhelming them with too many tasks, but at the same time, having them engage in, in, in the ways of, of teaching practice. So we thought that the blog would be a tool. So this is what I'm sharing with you. And we thought the blog would be a very useful tool, first of all, uh, to archive all the tasks and to keep on telling them, I'll just show you how we've done it. And then secondly, we thought it would be a very good collaborative tool because the students could come up. So I'm not going to go through a tool, but just the main elements. We have the entry uh, the, about the course, just to tell, tell us what the, what the course is all about. I don't think I have to go into detail. Uh, we have the facilitators. our deputy dean, and I'm sure you can recognize some of those. All of us have helped us teach on that course. So we, we took academics from all over the campus who could help us teach in this course. And, and then we have um, the workshops and, and schedules. So as I said, it's been quite flexible. We had only um, a series of nine workshops with tasks designed for each one of them. So the most interesting place has been this place where you see. So the good thing we've found about it is that you can archive all the tasks. So starting from when we started, um, so after the face-to-face -face workshop, we then started week one up to where we are now. So it means after the face-to-face -face workshop, you can follow up with tasks. And then we archive them, and then we tell them what is, what is expected of them. So we can go back to week one, up to where we are now. Okay. So if you see now, the, the tasks are quite uh, simple and not very complicated. So we are going, how do I get to the top of the... Uh, I don't want to see the older posts. How do I see the newer posts? I'm not quite sure. Hmm? Okay, week six. How do I see the newer posts? <clears throat> hmm? Do I go on? Oh. September, okay, sorry, yeah. All right, okay. So uh, we are in the seventh task. But if you see, we've just pasted it so that we can post each task at a particular and give them tasks. What is also interesting that each one of them has got their own blogs. Because I haven't asked them permission, I can't show you because some of the um, the things that have put them at task which they might not want to share. 
but each of them has got their own <coughs> blog, and then they post the tasks on them, and so we can look at what they've done and make comments and input. And on the other side, you can see, we also have a site for each one of the tasks or each one of the workshops. So as I said, after each workshop, for instance, the workshop that Tasneen and Juliet did, okay, they have an assignment and they have everything. And they also put in comments to say, share about how they feel about the workshop. Now, so far, as I said, I can't share much. This is what we've discovered so far. In terms of archiving, I think you think it's a very good idea um, because they can go back. We don't have enough face-to-face -face time for them to meet them to face it. So in terms of archiving tasks and making them sure that they can do the task is really very useful. But we found that in terms of collaborative learning, it will need a little, little bit of a push. So we are thinking that, that it's really, you have to design this um, um, into the collaborative space. It's not, even though the blog is a very personal space, it's not the space that people willingly jump into. So you have to design it in such a way that you encourage them to participate, using even the other old things like emails or talking together so that they can come. The other thing we have found it takes time. For the uptake, after putting up the blog, Tazin, I think you remember, I don't know how much time we've gone into encouraging them. So there's that push which has to go in at the beginning. Even yesterday we have to have a session just talking to them. How are you going about this? Can you go back? So I think it takes the transition takes a little bit of time to move from where we are to using uh, the technologies. The other things I think we also need to discuss that may be important in a teaching environment is that tension between what is public and what is private. As you see for the blog space, you know. So how do we design it that we only capture those things that we want and not necessarily interfere in the private space um, of the learner? So basically, I think that we are. But so far, I think in our context, because we wanted to find a flexible space for providing learning for our students, it has proved to be uh, very worthwhile. Yesterday, when we interviewed our participants to ask them how, how they felt, a lot of them felt overwhelmed by the whole exercise experience, but they said they were feeling less overwhelmed now than at the beginning. The other thing that they didn't quite like is how we paced our course. Because remember, we had a face-to-face -face, uh, um, uh, portion and then online. What we are trying to do was to congregate all the workshops into one week and then follow up with tasks later. They didn't like that. They would have preferred that we did one task, you know, responded to it, and then followed it up later. So those are some of the things. The other things were also technical that there are no alerts when somebody puts up a post so that they know when something is up. And the other um, thing that they complained about, of, of course, was the, there were too many tasks. So we have to make sure that we design authentic tasks where they, they do one big task, maybe which is split up, so that it doesn't take too much of their time. But I think from a point of view of learning, I think we have learned that there are users that we can use the blog space for. But I think a lot of thinking and planning has to go into the design and also it will, it will not fit everybody. So this is for a specific group. It's, it's a flexible, flexible tool which can be used to factor. And the, thing, the other thing I think that you realize now is we are outside. Um, uh, we are outside the UWC space. We're actually using Google. So, so that, that's another thing that has to be worked out. Because it was more flexible, it was free. Okay. All they had to do was to get a Gmail address for them to log on. So I think that is where we are for now. Does that kind of give you an insight of what we're doing? Okay, thank you. I think I'm in touch. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with regards to the Google Blogger, mm. when you set up the groups, yeah. who has what access to us? Is it just the group members and you? Or is it, did you make it open to the whole internet community? For now, we are just, it's just the group because we're using it to learn. Yeah. But I think we can. We are going to open up it up later. But as I said, especially in terms of that, but the blog is normally a very open space. 
But I think that is something you can also decide for yourself. You can limit the access to only the people who are involved in the group. And then, and then maybe open it up to whoever. The good thing is that you can really do that. Yeah. You can either allow or not allow certain other people to come. Any other questions? Yes? Yeah. I might have missed it, but I mean, I understand this is flexible. Are you saying it would be more flexible than the Canva site? I think it's more, fle in more flexible that we, you, you, it's not restricted by the way you design it. It, it can't, it can't, maybe it, it, it is, but it, I think it's flexible in, in, in that you can reach it, or you don't have, um, it, it's a tool which is widespread, maybe that's well. in, in Canva is always designed to, uh, to, uh, to, to center around a community, which has also its, its advantages, because in a university you want to control, have access to control. But here for the visitors, but here it works around because remember our group is not quite the normal formal group. So it's a kind of informal thing somewhere, some, some there. so it's very flexible. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we're trying to, use, to, to say is that we hope these people will use their blog also to reach and to show them. And to show this. But I think the restriction for me is in terms of access to the technology itself. I think they use it. I want to add that the previous speakers were in Kamba. You can also now that this block and embed it in the <coughs> So you can again link to the specific of your content, etc. So that could be another mm. person. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll, I'll say this.
my family, my friends to see what I'm doing at school. Um, and, and, and a lot of students that were in the focus group actually start committing on just that. That they feel that there has to be a separation between the academia and the private life. I mean, like the juggling, you also want your private photo space and you... Now you want to come into my Facebook as well? <laughs> 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 